Today on the program, we've got a preview of a jam-packed, fun-filled day. From the Ozark Mountains, Springfield, Missouri, Jubilee USA is produced through the facilities of station KYTV. KY3 celebrates 50 years on the air today, our golden anniversary. Like we say, get it on. Welcome to KY3's 50th Anniversary Celebration. Joining us now on stage is KY3 Sports Director Ned Reynolds and 5 and 10 News Anchor Lisa Rose. Isn't she an absolute sweetheart? <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and good evening to you all. Welcome to our golden anniversary celebration. It's going Good so gracious. fast. Can you imagine that golden anniversary? Of course, I haven't been here all that time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we won't go there, though, okay? Don't, you know how to hurt a guy, Lisa. Folks, it's just great to have you with us tonight. It really is. Not only here, but we're just so thankful that you're joining us at home as well. We do have a big evening plan. Yes, we do, and we have a lot of people to acknowledge. First of all, I do want to uh, talk a little bit about some of the individuals who were not able to be here tonight. Uh, Hank Herman, our uh, longtime anchor from uh, back in uh, yesteryear, Bill Williams, who uh, made a cameo appearance just a second ago, Patrick Van Horn, uh, Jim Ware, among the many who do send their best wishes but unable to be here. You know, almost the whole KY3 crew is here tonight. Just a few people back at the station to make sure we get the 10 o'clock news on. Have to do that. But we have some very, very special guests, people you absolutely have loved from the past, wouldn't you say? Indeed we do, we and have you our, have the honors. That's right. We have our own Tom Dye. Remember him? Weatherman du jour. And of course, longtime favorite Leanne Gregg. She'll be out here. And our wonderful Fred Miller, who I got to sit by on the set for a long time. Yeah, Lisa, Fred Miller hired me 187 years ago. Do you know that? Just that long ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now he's we know a... who to blame. <laughs> and uh, Fred Rains is here tonight. Fred, of course, the voice of the puppets and a gentleman, a big favorite. A young lady who is the answer to a trivia question, who you'll be meeting a little bit later on, the first female anchor in the history of the Ozarks, Joyce Reed. Yeah. Joyce is here. Mr. Ed Filmer, who will be presenting a compilation of some of the wonderful documentaries that he did over the years. Mm -hmm. And of course, Lisa, Senator Champion is here tonight, but she no. wasn't Senator Champion when she was with us. That's our Aunt Norma you're talking <laughs> about. She'll be here too. We have a lot of information about KY3 and the Ozarks coming up tonight. We have wonderful music. Oh, we do indeed. Nick Rule and Ned the Band are here, plus the a cappella group, Well Sung. So you're in for a huge evening, and we hope you do enjoy it. We've seen a lot of big changes over the last 50 years, and a lot of them in television. Oh, gosh, yeah, Lisa. God, where do we begin? You have The programming has changed so much. No. We, oh, yeah. <laughs> we had some uh, rather benign sitcoms back in the 70s, but, but things have changed. Uh, ER, West Wing, Oprah, yep. Law and & Order. Andy Griffith is That's still right. with us though, isn't he? Uh -huh. That's an old time favorite, still Indeed. new today, it really is. And in fact, 
KY3 has produced a number of outstanding shows right in our own building. And guess who was there to watch oh. them all? So he's going to be our tour tonight as we take this trip down memory lane. Enjoy it, folks. KY3's museum. Here in the lobby at KY3, we have this colorful display that depicts the 50 years of highly honored and storied tradition that we have at KY3. Gosh, looking at some of the items here, there's some of the old film that we used to clip and paste together, and here's some of the old Ozark Jubilee. We'll be talking about it later, right up until the current era. We don't go quite back to the hieroglyphics, but pretty doggone close. Well, as the uh, senior on-the-air employee, boy, is that sobering. It's my honor to take you on this little trip down memory lane, and we do hope you enjoy it. Well, Baby KY3 drew its first breath at 4.47 on the afternoon of October 1st, 1953. That first day was primitive by today's standards, five and a half hours on the air, all canned programming, and that meant films. Videotape was far in the future. One of KY3's early live productions was Sunday afternoon with the Springfield Symphony, bringing the music of the masters to many thousands. There was KY3's version of Bandstand, called Teen Time, with the area teeny boppers rocking in the studio, and there was the kids' western program, The Wrangler. Of course, doing telecast from other locales has been a staple of KY3. The first remote was from the Ozark Empire Fair in 1954, quickly followed by The Man on the Street, later Man with a Mic, sports events, and breaking news stories. Well, look at this relic here. This baby's older than I am, and that is saying something. This is one of the original cameras that was used when KY3 went on the air. Back then, this was state of the art, and it was considered portable. Portable, I guess, if you have a herd of elephants to carry it. It's also one of the cameras used in one of the really glory eras of KY3 when this station produced the Ozark Jubilee back in the 1950s, first from the Jewel Theater and then later the Landers. This camera photographed one of the great legends in country music back then, Clyde Julian Foley, the host of the show, much better known by his nickname of Red. And they came by the thousands to see it. Many of the headline names in country and western music were here for the live national telecast with Red Foley. In 1964, the Slim Wilson Show opened an 11-year run. This was a local offshoot of the Ozark Jubilee, featuring Slim Wilson, Speedy Hallworth, and the Tall Timber Trio, all of whom had performed with Red Foley, L.D. Keller and the Promenaders, and a cast of hundreds. From the embryonic stages of KY3's existence to the present, this station has viewed the arts and entertainment as vital and enriching to our successful Ozark society. The Ozark people he lived with found him to be a good neighbor. The love, the fighting, and the shame and life and death of the hill country became a classic under the pen of Harold Bell Wright. The Shepherd of the Hills is our story. Hi, Bobby. Merry Christmas. You know, every year at Christmas time, I get a sudden yen to be back among the home folks in my old hometown again. As we made our way out of the church, as husband and wife, our friends and family clapped in approval. Are you ready for this? All right, then. In a moment, our first installment from the Night Diary. I really love being here with Sandy and Daddy Warbucks and little Molly and all my friends. And now you're here. Leaping lizards. In a half an hour, the seats will be filled with people, and they're all here to see us. How many of you remember SMS Forum and Drury Presents? These late 1960s education courses for credit were aired early in the mornings. Now, one of the instructors, a young law professor named John Ashcroft, he's teaching somewhat advanced courses now. And another of the instructors, Roy Blunt. Those TV classes prepared him well for teaching in the halls of Congress. As you might expect with my partiality towards the world of fun and games, KY3's quite proud of the impact we've had on the Ozarks and in some respects, the national sports scene. There's Melody Howard and Tina Robbins. They're going to go for the last shot. Underneath, Muller misses, Wingfield shoots, scores! And she's fouled! And the clock has run out! 
Monty Harge. Give and go to Hafer. Interception, and here comes Fontenot. Oh, Watch ahead. this, folks. Oh! That is a big time tomahawk jam by William Fauntleroy, and he draws the foul. There have been telethons, special shows, award winning news productions. The list of achievements is enormous in these 50 years of presenting quality television to the Ozarks. The regional and national awards presented to KY3 are a great source of pride and stimulus for continuing and constantly improving on KY3's stated mission presenting the highest degree of informative as well as entertaining televiewing to our many friends and neighbors. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Actually, I've, I've, I've got to tell you, after seeing that basketball footage, I'm pumped. Go Bears! <laughs> That's a, a, yeah, there you go. He had there to work that in. <laughs> a little trip down memory lane, but sure. that is only the beginning. We have so much more to do. That's right. For instance, back in 1954, KYTV had a program called Visitor TV, and that is what became Man with a Mic, and this is one of the men who had the mic. Fred Miller and I are the last ones to do it. Man with a Mic, many of you remember. The audience participation show, we'd uh, frequently pass out among the audience. <laughs> And, of course, we'd give away groceries, and then they'd try to guess the secret silhouette. We're not going to do the secret silhouette tonight, but... We have our own version of Man with the Mic, and we're going to begin with a woman, our very own Christina King, out there in the audience with you tonight. Christina? Oh, thanks, you guys. I think I like woman with a mic. Don't you think? You know, one thing, whether it's a man or a woman who has the mic, the funny thing about live TV is you never know what anybody is going to say. And so that's kind of what we're going to play with tonight. What's your name? My name is Russell Keller. Russell, can you stand up for me, Russell? How many years have you been watching KY3? Well, ever since you went on. 50 years? 50 years. I like that number. Do you have a, a good memorable moment? What do you remember most about KY3? Something stands out in your mind. Well, of course, my brother was L.D. Keller of the Promenaders. That's about, says oh, it all. Oh, the Promenaders. <laughs> Everybody remembers the Promenaders. Well, and you know, you need to stay tuned because a little bit later I'm going to be wearing a little something that looks awfully Promenader-like. Okay. Thank you for being with us. Let's go up here and see who else we have joining us. And you know, not everybody with us tonight has been around town for that long. What's your name? Kathy Nordyke. Okay. Kathy, how long have you uh, been watching KY3? Eight years since November. Okay. Eight years. So, any memorable moments for you? The weather. I moved here from Phoenix, Arizona with my family. We didn't have snow in Phoenix. <laughs> and I mean to tell you, KY3 was always great with the weather report, and I knew exactly what was going to happen, and they were always right on. So it was wonderful. I'm glad you brought the weather up because Tom Dye, quick, come over here. Tom Dye, everybody. You know. <laughs> you know People used to say to me, you storied to me. But what I liked best was going out and speaking to live crowds and telling stories. And I had one that I wanted to bring up tonight, if you don't mind. I love it. We were going out in the helicopter to West Plains to a school that had hundreds of students out to greet us there. And we decided, Ken Carroll decided, that we would salute them. A little guy there had a camera up in front of us, just like that. And he was on the ground there. And as we brought the helicopter in like that, to that little guy ran like a chicken. I never saw anything like it. He, You're scaring the kids. He, yeah, and that was several years ago, and he's grown now, and he might be watching, and I'd like to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Wherever you are, we're sorry. We're going to keep you entertained throughout the evening. We promise we'll keep you laughing, and every once in a while as we go to a break, we're going to show you some very funny bloopers. Take a look. Coming up on KY3's 50th anniversary celebration, we take a look at some of the most memorable moments of news during the past 50 years. The strike is finally over. Oh, can you believe it? And speaking of the Razorbacks, they're trying to become only the hockey where the Blues had a chance to gain some ground runs, women's college basketball, where the national champion was crowned today. 
where they'll be meeting the Arkansas Razorbacks. Southwest Missouri State is playing in the uh, <laughs> Division I double. <laughs> I'm not the pheasant plucker, I'm the pheasant plucker's son, and I'll be plucking pleasant pheasants till the pheasant plucking's done. Please welcome to the stage 6 and 10 news anchor Tony Beeson and former news anchor Leanne Gregg. Anybody remember Leanne? Yeah. <laughs> wow, I always wondered what it would feel like for us all to be in the same living room together, watching the news, eating frozen TV dinners, <laughs> fighting the kids over the remote control, and watching that wonderful high-definition def television on our non-HD TV sets and taking calls from telemarketers all at the same time. <laughs> it's all good. Progress. Progress indeed. She is from Creighton, Missouri. Uh, that's close to Uric, Missouri, in case you don't know. And uh, she was with KY3 from the early 80s to the, the, late, the early 90s. She is now with uh, NBC News Channel, uh, based out of Denver. Welcome home, Leanne. Thank you, Tony. Thank you very much. It's great to be back. It's an honor to be here. It's also an honor to share the stage with you again, the same camera, after all these years. It really doesn't feel like it's been a decade since we were partners. Does it to me, it's no. Been a long and winding road since then. It really feels to me kind of like this is a class reunion, only better. It's kind of like a really good family reunion where you get to invite the entire town. So, <laughs> this is great, it's a great time. And since the beginning, as many of you know, KY3 has been committed to providing quality news coverage to the Ozarks, keeping people in southwest Missouri and northwest Arkansas informed, in touch with their community, with the nation, and with the world. You know, we're really grateful that KY3 News has remained a leader in the industry for over the years. And from our first newscast to the present, our commitment has stayed the same, helping viewers better understand the world around them and giving needed information to improve the lives of their families. It began with a 15-minute newscast October 1st, 1953. The top stories that day, panic in Springfield as deadly cobras turned up in streets and backyards. Missouri farmers struggle to survive a drought, and a future president married his mate. From that first day to today, KY3 has brought the world into viewers' homes. Police and the FBI are investigating a bank robbery in Springfield. The mission control will be transferred from here at Kennedy Space Center to mission control in Houston. They knew where all of the state's weaknesses were, and they had plenty of time to prepare to exploit those weaknesses. They had organized search efforts all to bring Amanda home. The water is streaming from these buckets into the fire on top of this warehouse. It was a real blessing that this happened on the Sunday evening because lots of people were home. They were able to hear the warning sirens. The Pope concluded this meeting between Roman Catholics and Pentecostals saying he would pray again for Christian unity. And you can see all the damage this tornado here in Lawrence County left behind. Even though the explosion happened over nine hours ago, downtown Oklahoma City is still chaotic. We're waiting to hear if Lieutenant Governor Roger Wilson will or will not be sworn in tonight. The fire started because of lit cigarette ashes. This scorched earth is a really good example of just what this drought is starting to do to people. This, of course, was the day that Ivan Browning predicted most likely for an earthquake along the New Madrid Fault. A member of our action news team died in a plane crash near the Springfield Regional Airport this morning. Work will continue here, but that will be only underneath what is ground zero, what is on top, still has yet to be decided. And beyond the headlines of crime, car wrecks, and catastrophe, KY3 has been the Ozarks leader in investigative journalism, 
digging deeper in the stories to help our viewers understand the big picture. Nipaco managed to spew out thousands of gallons of dioxin waste. The common complaint for creditors never getting paid. We identified a group of developers who consistently give money to the people who vote on their projects. Well, isn't that your job? That sure is. So then, didn't you do this job? Within minutes, his story changes. Allison and Ryan's mom were shocked. That screaming alarm is right outside Allison's bedroom door. As a result of their investigative work into START, Crashar and Smith produced an hour documentary. Springfield prosecutor Ron Dirksen says justice is equal. The exact numbers show something different. The school district knew it had moisture problems, but no tests at Bingham and Sequiota until parents complained. Ozarkers know the weather here can change dramatically. That's why KY3 Storm Team has maintained a tradition of staying on top of rapidly changing weather. And when severe weather strikes, KY3 News has been on the scene within minutes. And at 920, a tornado touched down here, an apparent tornado at 923 West Battlefield. We have been tracking a very large tornado with this on Storm Tracker 3. It's just some of what you just see everywhere. This obviously came straight off the roof. We're dumping more than 16 inches of snow. As you can see behind me, it appears that the water has gone down. This large <laughs> piece of tent looks like, I mean, it obviously came off a shed of some sort. But it looks like an airplane part. And you wonder that how just far fell away. right outside our station. Here. Through 50 years, KY3 has been there for viewers in the Ozarks in good times and bad. And we're just getting started. As we begin our second half century, you can expect only more quality coverage. Truly making KY3 the place to be for news. Coming up, the best of Ozark life and more Man with the Mic with KY3 anchor Steve Grant. You know, everybody says there are two sides to a story. Well, there are a million sides to a story. Everybody has a different perspective and everybody is affected in a different way. And I think without people being fair, honest, and genuine like they are here, we would never see as many sides to the stories that we see. You come into work and it's an office like none other. Everybody here loves what they do and they love to do it and they love to do it well. Everyone comes to work with a smile on their face. It's like working in Never Never Land. I'm Al Roker, wishing a happy birthday to KY3. This is the Big 5-0. And thanks to everyone in Southwest Missouri for making Ozarks Today and NBC's Today Show part of your morning every morning. Please welcome to the stage 5 o'clock news anchor Jerry Jacob and former KY3 reporter and photojournalist Ed Filmer. Great to see you. Great to see you. The weekly series Ozark Life, folks, it has been an entree on the KY3 menu for parts of three decades. Ozark Life started with a man next to me. Welcome back. Longtime KY3 Ed Filmer, everybody. I've had so much fun doing this. This is just great seeing all you people. Ozark Life came about because as a television reporter, I wanted to tell stories about the people who were not normally in the headlines, the kind of people I grew up in, with in Marshfield, Missouri, the unsung heroes. Well, tonight I want to show you just one of my stories. People always say, what's your favorite story, Ed? Well, this is just one of them. There's a lot of favorite stories. One of those favorite stories is about a man who quite coincidentally, a few years ago, celebrated his 50th anniversary. It's kind of a natural thing is to get up every morning and, and go get the kid. J.D. Collins has been a school bus driver for 50 years on this route. I'm hauling third generation. It's his last day behind the wheel. He's a pillar of the community because he's more than a bus driver. He's very dedicated. He's never turned down anything. When we ask him to do something, he's always there. The kids just love him, and everybody loves him. He's very dedicated. He's just a gentle soul, kind and tenderhearted. Thank you, all right. Thank you, lady, for everything. JD's last day was full of thank yous. How you doing, huh? This is your last day. Yeah, I guess it is. Well, thank you. Love you. I love you, Jake. He cares about all of us and that each one of us is has a place in his heart. 
Well, thank you. Thank you. You bet. J.D. has driven Bye -bye. his children, his grandchildren, and three generations of students at Howell Valley Schools. His credibility is so great because he gained it a little bit a day for 50 years. People like J.D. Uh, come along one in a thousand, one in a million. Yeah, if I could pattern my life after somebody, J.D. Collins would be one of those people. More than just a school bus driver. He's more than a school bus driver. And he was mine, but he's more than a school bus driver. He's up to bat. Batter, batter. J.D.'s done more than drive a school bus for 50 years. Two and two. His friends in this community say he's been a mentor, an example, a man to